If you have been living and breathing GCEP like me, you must have got their announcement that they have made their entire GCEP library free now, which is absolutely incredible news as now we can build some really stunning animations with ease and zero limitations. For example, if you have been stalking about winning websites, you must have noticed this text reveal animation on practically every other site where the text gracefully reveals through a clip mask smoothly on y-axis when you scroll. I have been consistently studying site of the day winners for over 2 years now and I believe this is hands down the most used text reveal animation across all of them. And since now GSEP's all plugins are free, it couldn't be a more perfect time than starting with their split text plugin which had been exclusive to paid members until now but now we can easily create these slick text animations very easily and efficiently. So I have prepared this simple page with bunch of sections that have different elements like headers and paragraphs. In this video, I will be breaking down exactly how to build this leaked text reveal animation using Next.js, scroll trigger and GSAP's split text plugin step by step. We will create a drop-in component that works anywhere so all you have to do is import it into any of your Next.js or React project, wrap any text element and instantly get this cool animation running. We'll also make sure it is highly configurable so you'll have an option to trigger animations on scroll, set custom delays and tweak everything to match your exact needs. If you are interested in more of these GSAP videos, make sure you leave a like on the video and hit subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to access the source code for this project and hundreds of other such micro projects along with a complete website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Let's jump right into the code. To save us some time, I've already set up a fresh Next.js project and have it running locally. So let's kick things off by cleaning up the default boilerplate, giving us a clean slate to work with. First up, I'll open globals.css file and clear out all the default styles. I'll do the exact same thing for page model CSS file, completely wiping the slate clean. Now let's jump into the home page component. I'll remove all the placeholder markup from the main file to start fresh. Now we can begin building out the structure of our page. Let me start by creating a navigation bar. I'll split this into two main columns, then take the first column and divide it into two further subcolumns. For this tutorial, I'll just use simple span elements for placeholder links since navigation isn't our main focus here. This is purely to establish some basic page structure. Moving forward, let's create our hero section. I'll structure this with two distinct parts, a hero image container and a header area. The hero image will be an image element that functions as our background visual and the header will contain an h1 element with some compelling placeholder text. Let's grab the images we'll be using for this. Inside the public directory, highlight two images, one for our hero section and another we'll use shortly. Next in line is our about section. I'll place in a span element here followed by a header containing an h1 tag with some descriptive text. Following that, we'll add an about image section. This is straightforward, just another image element placed within this section. Now it's time to add more content to our page. I'll create a section called story and split it into two columns. The first column will have an h1 with our section title, while the second column will have three paragraph elements with our content. Next up, I'll build a philosophy section mirroring the structure of our about section. It will contain a span element and a header with an h1 inside. And lastly, we'll create our footer. Following the same pattern as our navbar, I'll divide it into two columns and further split the first column into two subcolumns. Within each of these divisions, I'll populate them with placeholder text using span elements and h1s. Feel free to swap these out with actual links or restructure as needed for your project. Our goal here is simply to have text content ready for animation. With our page structure fully built out, let's move on to styling everything. I'll start with a global reset setting margin and padding to zero for all elements and applying border box to ensure consistent sizing. For the body, I'll set a modern font family as our main typeface. Let's define our typography hierarchy. For H1 elements, I'll set a large font size with a lighter font weight. I'll also tighten up the letter spacing and reduce the line height for a more impactful look. For paragraphs, I'll use a comfortable reading size with the same font weight and a relaxed line height and add some bottom margin for better spacing. Our span elements will be styled differently. I'll make them uppercase using a monospace font with a smaller font size and display them as block elements for better control. For images, I'll set them to fill their containers completely using width and height of 100% with object fit cover to maintain proportions. 
Now let's position our navigation bar. I'll make it absolutely positioned at the top, spanning the full width and add some padding. For the first column in the nav, I'll use flexbox to align items horizontally. The second column will have right aligned text. Nav spans get a grey color and mix plan mode set to difference for a nice overlay effect. Both column and sub column classes will use flex1 to distribute space evenly. For sections, I'll make them relative positioned, full viewport width and height with some padding. The hero and about image sections will use flexbox to center their content both horizontally and vertically. The hero image container needs absolute positioning to fill the entire section with a negative z index to sit behind the content. The hero header will take up half the width and center its text. Hero h1 gets a grey color for contrast against the background. The about image section will have a max content height and generous padding. Its image will only take up a portion of the width with a portrait aspect ratio. Both about and philosophy sections use flexbox in column direction with space between to spread content. The philosophy section gets a dark background with white text for contrast. For the H1s in about and philosophy sections, I let text in them to create an elegant offset. The story section will use flexbox with a gap between columns and margin at the bottom. Finally, the footer uses flexbox with space between alignment, flex end for vertical positioning and generous padding. Footer columns and subcolumns also use flexbox with appropriate alignments. And here is the crucial part for our animation, the line class. I'll translate it down by 100% and set will change to transform for better animation performance. This line class will be used by our GSAP animation to create the level effect. Now it's time to create our text level animation component. Inside the source directory, I'll create a new folder called components. Inside this components folder, I'll create a new file called copy.jsx. This will be our reusable animation component. Now let's start building our components step by step. First, I'll set up the basic create component structure. I'll add use client directive at the top. This is important because it tells Next.js that this component should run on the client side, not during server side rendering. We need this because GSAP animations require access to the DOM, which only exists in the browser. Next, I'll import React and the use ref hook. The use ref hook is crucial here. It allows us to create references to DOM elements so we can access and manipulate them directly. Next, I'll create our basic functional component called copy. It's going to accept children as props. These are the text elements we want to animate. Inside the component, I'll create a container ref using use ref hook. For the return statement, I'm using a react method called clone element. This is a special react function that lets us take the child element that's passed in and add our container ref to it. What this does is essentially saying, take whatever element the user passes in, keep all its properties, but also attach this ref so we can access the actual DOM node. This basic setup gives us the foundation we need. We now have a component that can receive any text element as a child and attach a reference to it, which is exactly what we need to start applying our GSAP animations. Next, let's install GSAP and all the plugins to start building our animation functionality. Once they are installed, I'll close the terminal and start by importing GSAP from the GSAP library. Next, we need to import split text. This is a really powerful plugin that can take any block of text and split it into individual lines, words, or even characters. I'll also import scroll trigger so we can detect when elements enter the viewport and trigger the animation set exactly the right moment. Finally, I'll import use gsap hook. This is a special hook created by the gsap team specifically for react applications. Finally, we need to register our plugins, split text and scroll trigger. Now let's make our component more flexible by adding props for animation control. I'll update our copy function to accept additional props alongside children. First, I'll add animate on scroll with a default value of true. This prop gives us control over whether the animation should trigger when the element scrolls into view or if it should play immediately when the component mounts. 
I'll also add a delay prop with a default value of zero. This is really useful when you have multiple copy components on a page and you want to create a staggered animations right away when component mounts. Now we need to set up additional references to track our animated elements. First, I'll create element refs using use ref with an empty array. This will store references to all the text elements we want to animate, important when we have multiple children. Next, I'll create split refs also with an empty array. This will store all our split text instances. We need to keep track of these so we can properly clean them up when the component unmounts. Finally, I'll create a lines ref with an empty array. This will store references to all the individual lines that split text creates. These are the actual elements we'll be animating. This organization helps us maintain clean code and ensure proper cleanup. Now let's implement the use this app hook, which is where all our animation logic will live. I'll set up use this app with an arrow function as its first parameter. This is where we'll write our animation code. The second parameter is a configuration object. In the configuration object, I'm setting scope to container. I'm also adding dependencies array with animate on scroll and delay. Inside this function, the first thing I do is check if the container exists. This is a safety check. Sometimes React might call our effect before the DOM is ready. So we need to make sure our element actually exists before trying to animate it. This is important because use this app might run multiple times and we want to start fresh each time to avoid duplicating animations. Now we need to handle how we select elements to animate since our component might receive a single child or multiple children. So I'll create an empty elements array. Then I'll check if our container has a special attribute called data copy wrapper. If it does, it means we wrapped multiple children in a div. So I'll use arrays from method to get all the children of our container. If the container doesn't have this attribute, it means we have a single child element. So I'll just put the container itself into our elements array. This approach gives us flexibility. Our component can work with a single heading a single paragraph or multiple text elements. So you don't need to worry about how many elements you can pass. Our component figures it out automatically. This pattern is really useful for creating reusable components that adapt to different use cases. Now we'll iterate through our elements and split them into animatable lines. I'll use for each method to loop through each element. First, I'll push the element into our element refs array to keep track of it. Then comes the magic. I'll create a split text instance for each element. The configuration is really important here. I'm setting type to lines, which tells split text to break the text at natural line breaks. The mask property set to lines is crucial. It creates wrapper elements around each line that act as masks. This is what allows us to hide the text below and reveal it smoothly. I'm using lines class, which gives each line a unique class name like line one, line two, etc. This is helpful for debugging and styling. After creating the split, I'll push it into split refs array and then add all the split lines to our lines array using the spread operator. Now we need to handle the text indentation properly. So I'll get the computed styles of each element using windows get computed style method. This gives us access to all the CSS properties, including text indent. If the element has a text indentation and it's not zero, I need to handle it specifically. The problem is when we split text into lines, the indentation gets lost. So I'll take that indent value and apply it as padding to just the first line. Then I'll remove the original text indent from the element. This preserves the visual design while allowing our animation to work correctly. Time to set the initial state for our animation. I'll use these apps set method to position all our lines. By setting y to 100%, I'm moving each line down by its own height. This effectively hides the lines below their mask containers. Those mask wrappers we created have overflow hidden. So when we push the lines down, they become invisible. This is our starting position. Now for the actual animation setup, I'll create an animation props object with all our animation settings. The Y value of 0% brings lines back to their natural position. Duration of 1 second gives a nice smooth animation. The stagger of 0.1 means each line starts animating 0.1 seconds after the previous one, creating that cool cascading effect. The delay prop we passed in gets added here, allowing custom timing. If animate on scroll is true, I'll create a scroll trigger animation. The trigger is our container and top 75% means the animation starts when the top of our element is 75% down the viewport. 
Setting once to true ensures the animation only plays the first time the element comes into view. If the animate on scroll is false, I'll create a regular animation that plays right away. Now the cleanup function is critical for performance. I am returning a function that will run when our component unmounts. Inside, I'll loop through all the split refs and call revert on each one. The revert method is special. It restores the original DOM structure, removing all the extra elements split text created. This prevents memory leaks and ensures our DOM stays clean. Finally, let's handle how we return elements from our component. I'll check if we have exactly one child using the count method. If we do, I'll simply clone that child and attach our container ref to it. But if we have multiple children, I need to wrap them in a div. I'll create a div with our container ref and add a data copy wrapper attribute. This is the attribute we check for in earlier step to know we have multiple children. This approach makes our component incredibly flexible. And that's it. Our copy component is now complete. It's reusable, performant, and handles all the edge cases. Let's head back to our page file and put it to work. First, I'll add the use client directive again at the top of our page since we are using the client side features. Next, I'll import our copy component from the components folder and I'll also import React Lanis from Lanis React for smooth scrolling. Next, I'll wrap our entire page with the React Lanis component, adding the root prop. This gives us that buttery smooth scroll effect throughout the entire page. Now here comes the exciting part, animating our text. I'll start by wrapping the text elements with our copy component. For the hero section h1, I'll wrap it with copy. I'll do the same for the about section and also for the story section. I'll wrap the h1 title in all three paragraphs with copy components. Same for the philosophy section, I'll wrap both the span and h1 elements. I've also wrapped the social media links inside footer in a copy component for a nice tagger travel effect. And there we have it. Our page is now fully animated. You can see every text element travels smoothly as you scroll. The best part is, this copy component is completely reusable. I hope you found this video helpful. See you in the next one.